Okay, so for those who don't know, we've just said goodbye to Ajahn Vimali like two days ago on the 25th of May. And we had a really wonderful two weeks just traveling around with him and teaching, mostly being on the receiving end, which is very unusual and also very wonderful for me. So I felt really nourished by the seven day retreat that we did in Derbyshire. And uh, Venerable Peko was also helping out, giving some guided meditations. And I think I did the last meta meditation on that retreat. That's becoming my little uh, niche. <laughs> I'm always asked to do the meta meditation these days. So I said to Ajahn Bramali during the gender talk, you know, nuns are not just for meta and teaching children. <laughs> we also can teach dependent origination. But you know what? Meta is anyway the heart of this practice. And by cultivating meta regularly, we do learn to incline more and more towards kindness, towards a sense of acceptance and openness and embracing whatever arises in our mind. And, you know, you can talk about highfalutin dhamma and seeing through the causality of everything. But if you can't actually stay with your present experience in the here and now, you know, with a mind that is receptive, open, willing to learn, willing to listen, uh, even when it's difficult, then we're not going to be able to see such subtle things as the arising of suffering, right? And the arising of uh, this whole process of uh, how we go from birth to death, from birth to death again and again and again, because this is subtle and it involves a lot of delusion, of course, and uh, ill will and craving are the outcome of that delusion. So with meta practice, we are actually um, aiming to, uh, to weaken these hindrances, particularly the hindrance of ill will, which really manifests more often, I would say, as a kind of uh, not wanting our experience, you know, being averse, wanting something different, wanting to push things away, wanting to turn away from the unpleasant and toward the pleasant. So metta really softens our relationship toward everything that arises and allows us to hold it kindly and to stay with it for longer as a result. Um, and so although metta has also obviously very pleasant feelings associated with it, especially when it really starts to arise as an emotion in the heart and the mind, and soften the body, heal physical disease, help you sleep deeply, etc., etc. Um, still, we're not looking for anything special. We're not looking for um, a feeling of bliss or a feeling of lightness, you know, that, because that again can be craving. Really, the, the intention in meta meditation is to overcome any kind of ill will um, towards anybody in your life. So in these groups, we've actually been going through the different categories of being, starting off usually, I mean, it's a kind of loop. So, but in the beginning, we started off with, uh, I think, a loved person or a benefactor. Um, we include ourselves, of course, as well, but that's usually a little more difficult. And a neutral person. This means there is no such thing as a neutral person, right? Or as a loved person, it's our perception of that being so it basically means we don't have particularly special feelings towards somebody you know a, a person who we have uh, neither a lot of uh, affection nor any ill will towards somebody that you may not know very well is uh, what we mean by the neutral person and then a person who we have difficulties with who's sometimes called the enemy or the um, I don't know the enemy I suppose is how we usually call them and uh, you know, sometimes that can be ourself, can't it? <laughs> the unlike, dislike person. And sometimes it can be someone who we just, I don't know, kind of try to avoid. Other times it can be someone who's really deeply hurt us and we usually don't recommend starting with that person straight away. So it's a gradual cultivation. So I thought today, uh, partly because I've lost track of where we are in that sequence and also because it's... Uh, my birthday and this morning we had a lovely breakfast sharing the food and sharing some chocolates and things like that i thought we could do a kind of meta tea party where we invite all kinds of different people to the table <laughs> or to the the picnic area if you happen to be outside and uh and it's really up to you who you invite in so all these suggestions are just that if anything feels difficult or um, unnerving or at the edge of your comfort zone, just be very gentle with that. Don't push anything. And remember that, you know, whoever you invite in 
also can be asked to leave. So the door is open for them to enter and for them to exit as well. So we'll start off by just centering ourselves in our own body and mind, uh, gently and softly and with a, an accepting heart. And then we will um, bring our comrades around us at the, uh, at the breakfast table or in our case, the little Vihara here. So please get comfortable. We'll do about 40 minutes or so, 45 minutes of meditation. And uh, for meta meditation in particular, it's important to listen into your body, not push it around, but rather let your body decide how it's most comfortable sitting. You can throw out the manuals. <laughs> you can throw out your previous conditioning about how you think real meditation should be and just listen to your body really taking time to adjust anything that might be a little tight including the way you've folded your limbs or the clothing that you're wearing maybe your shoulders you want to give them a stretch your neck your back Sometimes you've not really woken up yet and you just want to slump and that's okay too. As long as you're aware of your posture and the purpose of your posture, which is to provide comfort, ease and a sense of alertness. <clears throat> and gently closing your eyes Allowing all those visual impressions to settle down. As you slowly become more in touch with the feeling part of the mind, the direct experience, rooted in the body. and any sensations you feel. And quite often when we do close our eyes and come into contact with our body, we might notice unpleasant sensations. Just see if there's a tendency to want to wish them away. And perhaps establish a sense of friendship toward them instead. In the same way you'd welcome a friend who's maybe feeling a bit groggy or tired a bit sore. Just welcoming those feelings and giving them space to be. Infusing them with care, with warmth, with goodwill. Just as though you were sitting outside, we have a lovely courtyard here. Sitting outside, just soaking up the morning sun. Allowing that gentle sunshine to gradually relax the body, relax the mind. That sunshine here is your kind awareness. So just receiving that. You might 
might wish to spread this kind awareness through the whole of your body, checking through part by part. So every limb, every cell is included in the field of kind awareness, just as the sun soaks through and warms up everything it shines upon. Allowing yourself to relax. It may help to build up an atmosphere around you, perhaps imagining a special place where you feel at ease. It may be a very sunny courtyard or a room perhaps filled with lovely plants. So what comes to mind for me is our Dana Sala downstairs in this Vihara with its glass doors leading out into the courtyard, the sun coming through the doors into the room. Lots of lovely tropical plants that really shouldn't survive here but thrive in the atmosphere of care. So whatever that place is for you, it may be a place in nature, or your own home. Taking your seat, feeling fully at ease and settled here. And in that space, there's enough room for others to enter and also to leave. So imagine inviting in someone who's very close to you or who you greatly respect and admire. Someone who you feel very safe and happy 
to be around. Imagining them entering your space with a smile. And you invite them to sit wherever you wish them to. Perhaps right by your side. It could be a teacher, spiritual companion or a friend. Maybe a loved one, a parent, or a child, even a pet. Whatever brings a smile to your heart. And connecting to any sense of well-being or ease you experience right now or even just the beauty of your intention to care. Start wishing this person, this being well. Looking into their eyes or maybe sensing their presence And connecting with your deepest wish for this person's well-being. Sometimes it's a feeling or an emotion. Other times it may help to use some simple words. Such as, may you be happy. May you be free. May you be safe. May you be at ease. And if you do use phrases, see that they really come from your heart. That you enjoy offering these wishes. And then leave space between each phrase to listen to the resonance. The emotion connected with that wish. Maintaining a kind and friendly awareness of the space between each phrase to allow the metta to grow and suffuse this being with well-being and ease.
just enjoying the act of giving without expecting anything in return. Seeing the face of this dear person, perhaps seated next to you or slightly in front, seeing their face relax and brighten up as they receive your loving kindness. And keeping this person beside you, I'd like to invite you to welcome another loved person, perhaps, so that you have both a benefactor and a friend or a partner or a child, and you feel really protected, surrounded by goodwill really safe in your space. So see who else might like to enter right now and take their seat perhaps at your other side and share whatever loving kindness has been developing so far with this third person too. as though the sun is spreading its golden rays. Connecting with your heart's intention for this second loved being. And if you wish, using the phrases as a way to just incline the mind in the direction of loving kindness.
And if you wish, you may like to invite someone who's less dear, less known to you into this space. Because soon it's time for sharing tea and chocolates and anything else. So perhaps a neighbour, someone you've been meaning to connect with or say hello to for a while. Perhaps someone who works in the same office or department as you. Who you've seen going about their business but never really taken the time to consider anything about their life. So this is a person who we don't have any vested interest with. No particular affection, nor any ill will. Someone who's not really part of your life, but you know, you know who they are. You've seen them around. Maybe just the person at the shop. And recognising that they too wish to be happy. They too wish to partake of this lovely atmosphere that's being developed. This friendly, warm, safe, inviting space. Allow them to come in and take their seat wherever you feel most comfortable for them to sit. And welcome them. Perhaps sharing a lovely pot of hot tea, first with your friends and then with this so-called neutral person as well. And as you do so, wishing them well. May you be safe and at ease. And as they feel the warmth and friendliness of this little gathering, they too start to relax. Feel at ease, maybe laugh. And form friendship with everyone present. So the energy of metta in the room gets stronger and stronger, filled with joy, as you wish this person well.
And this loving kindness, this lovely atmosphere starts attracting more of your friends, more of your neighbors. So other people start coming in, whoever you wish, whoever comes to mind. Perhaps members of this Anukampa community who've come from, in this case, Eastbourne and Perth and Germany and America. Perhaps some of the people who've recently come to your home or those you've yet to invite, but you feel now's the time to get to know. And imagine these people may be a few or many partaking in a lovely cup of tea, perhaps croissants, toast, porridge, whatever, whatever you like to serve. And just enjoying the friendly warmth. Both giving and receiving. as the sun pours into the room or through the branches and leaves of a tree. And noticing how you feel right now, whether there's any more relaxation and ease. Recognizing that however you're feeling, even if not very energized or even if the heart feels a little bit dry, it's okay. You're accepted. You're safe in this company of all these beings who are becoming your friends. You can relax and just receive the metta. Everybody is generating together right now.
may even feel resourced enough to invite someone in who you don't like very much. Just check how that feels, whether there's space for them too. Maybe on the other side of the room. For they too will enjoy the company and may relax when they receive a lovely cup of tea. <laughs> Maybe they'll get influenced by the kindness in the room. And you start to realise they too suffer just like you and make mistakes. They too need acceptance and care. Knowing they can come in and stay for a short time or maybe take a seat in the room. But you're safe in the company of so many friends. And you can let them go at any time. Just see how that feels. See if it's possible for you to wish them well too. Noticing how this loving kindness relaxes and brings a sense of peace to the room, to the space. So people can be together quietly. excitement settles right down. Allowing you to enjoy the peace in your own mind and heart. Just rest there for a while.
starting once again to experience the sensations, the feelings in your body and mind. Feel your connection with the ground or the chair. And just allow yourself to receive the blessings that I'll now chant in Pali to end this love and kindness meditation. Sabe Sata Sabe Pana Sabe Buddha Sabe Pugala Sabe Atta Bawa Pariapana Sabe Itio Sabe Purisa Sabe Aria Sabe Yanavia Sabe Deva Sabe Manusa Sabe Winiparika Awe Rahontu Abya Paja Hontu Aniga Hontu Sukiatanam Pariharantu Dukha Munjantu Yada Lada Sampadito Maui Gajantu Kama Saka Sad, sad, sad. Very nice. <clears throat> I don't know. I'm just <laughs> created it as we went along, but um, just to show you, meta can be creative too. And uh, it's important to be resourced, you know, and to be feeling safe and feeling that meta before you try and spread it too far. So just some different ways that you can uh, learn to include people that maybe you overlook or that you have issues with bit by bit. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that and any comments, questions or Anything you'd like to say, there's a little bit of time left to do that now. Uh, so please raise your hand if you wish or write something in the box. Richard, is that your hand? <laughs> yes, hi, Venable. For your oh. birthday, your birthday, I think this, um, I can I can recite you this um this little prayer I pray every day. It's from the Tibetan tradition, 
It's to do with meta practice. Oh. It's really good. So basically what it is, it's from Lama Sopa. What it says, it's six, it's um, nine, little, nine little poems. It's really quick. The first one is, I should give away fully with no sense of loss. My body, enjoyments, and all merits of the three times, past, present, and future, to accomplish the work for all sentient beings. By giving away it all, I will be liberated from the oceans of samsaric suffering, and my mind will achieve the sorrowless state. Since I have to leave everything at death, it is best to now give it away mm-hmm. to every single sentient being. Having given this body to sentient beings to use, however they want that makes them happy, wherever they always kill me, criticize, beat me, or whatever, it's totally up to them. Let this body only do actions that cause no harm to others, and whoever looks at or thinks of me may it never be meaningless for them. Whoever focuses on me, whoever with anger or devotion, May that always be the cause for them to achieve every success. May all who say unpleasant things, harm, mock, or make fun of me have the fortune to achieve enlightenment. May I become a guide for those who are guideless, a leader for those who are entering the path, a ship, a boat, and a bridge for all who wish to cross over water. May I become a beautiful garden for those who seek one, a light for those who look for light, bedding for those who wish to rest, and a servant for all who want me as their servant. Like a wish-granting jewel, a wish-fulfilling vase, powerful mantra, great medicine and a wish-granting tree, may I fulfill all the wishes of sentient beings. Just like the sky and the great elements, earth, water, fire, and wind, may I always be the means of living and the course of happiness for sentient beings equaling the limitless sky. So that's your birthday present. Sad, sad, sad. That's beautiful. <laughs> wow. Very lofty wishes and very beautifully put. That's for your kindness. Oh, thank you, Richard. That's lovely. You're welcome. Please, um, if you have time, maybe send me a photo of it. Yes, That's of course. Easiest, isn't it? Otherwise, you had to type it all out. And... Yes, I'll send you a photograph. Yes, of course. Or maybe I can find it online. Yes, I think um, it's a, you know obviously it's a quote from some llama. Yeah. Or maybe even older than that. I don't even know where it comes from. Yeah. To be honest, but um, it's a daily practice. So Rinpoche was recommending. It's basically it's a practice of metta. That's lovely. Yeah. You, know, you actually meditate on each yeah. poem every single day. Mm. You know, Beautiful. yeah. Thank you. You are lovely <laughs> and very nicely read. Thank well, you, <laughs> yeah. Well, that says it all, really, doesn't it? That's kind of an amazing aspiration. But imagine if we have that aspiration every day, you know. Maybe we get a little bit closer, because that's the beauty of thought. Sometimes, you know, just putting those intentions in the mind, it's like reprogramming ourselves. Yeah. It takes time, but slowly, slowly, it trickles down to the heart. Any questions or other comments you'd like to make? I'm having a lot of lovely messages. Uh, (laughs) That's really nice. Someone said, I feel the door of my heart a bit more open today. Yay. We forgot to do the check-in. Sometimes it's nice in our chanting groups because we do a little check-in at the beginning and people say, feeling a bit, I don't know, unenergetic or a little bit sad and then at the end we do it and oh lighter and (laughs) more energy clearer and it's incredible just within half an hour so yeah it's always nice to check in with yourself at the beginning and also at the end to see if there's a tiny bit of difference even a tiny bit and that shows the practice works 
So good. We don't seem to have any comments or questions. So um, yeah. I don't know if you want to put anything in the box else. Or no, maybe about our events or something. We ha we still have um we still have we're still looking for people to come to Cambridge for our day retreat on the 17th of June about forgive the wisdom of forgiveness. So we'll see how that goes. If it's a nice day like today, it's going to be a very beautiful location right in the heart of Cambridge City in the Quaker Meeting House. It's a very pretty place. So otherwise, maybe we'll see some of you here. Okay, shall we? Say goodbye. Shall we unmute everybody? <laughs>